There's gonna be two things that we talk about in this video. The first one is putting a juice ring on your cutting board. The second one is gonna be cutting a hole all the way through your cutting board. So to do this, we're gonna use VCarve Pro. Uh, you can see the icon down here on my quick links. Uh, it's probably on your desktop somewhere. Uh, so open that up and this is the page that you're going to get to. If you've done a few projects in here, you'll see on the left, uh, all the old projects that you work on, but we're gonna create a new file. And I need to put in the size of my cutting board here. That's gonna change the size of this white space. Uh, my cutting board is 14 inches wide by 10 inches high. Make sure you measure yours. If yours isn't exactly this, put the exact measurements and it's gonna throw off all of our design work if we don't do that. Uh, next step, we wanna have our Z0 position be the material surface. That means that when we touch off our tool, we're gonna to touch it off to the very top uh, of, the, of our cutting board. And then we're gonna to touch it off to the very center of the cutting board. So that's what the XY datum position means. So I'm gonna say, okay. And now I can get into editing and adding shapes if I want to. Let's do a juice ring first. Uh, if you wanna do a juice ring, and if you don't wanna do a juice ring, just skip through a little bit. I'm gonna click on this rectangle tool and I am going to make the X, well, I'll just do this. I'll make a 10 by 14 um, rectangle, and I'm gonna hit create. Make sure you have square edges. I'm gonna take this, highlight it, select the move tool, and then this should just snap to the outside there and snap to the down here. So it's going around the outside of your cutting board. Now I know we don't wanna cut the juice ring around the outside of the cutting board, but we're gonna use this offset tool now. So I'm gonna come over here and say offset inwards, a distance of one inch. So make sure inwards and one inch is there. And I'm gonna, you, can, you don't need to have any of these boxes checked and say offset. So this is gonna be my juice ring. It's one inch in from the edge of my cutting board. Um, next thing we gotta do is write the tool path for it. So I'll come over here and I wanna do this one right here called a profile tool path. So I'll click profile tool path. My cut depth is gonna be one eighth of an inch. That's 0.125. My start depth should be zero. And my, what I'm going to use is a ball nose half inch end mill. So a ball nose half inch, and it really doesn't matter which one you pick because it registers off the center of the bit anyhow. So don't, don't worry too much about which one you pick, but choose the half inch one, make sure it says it's in tool number one, feed rate of 100 inches, plunge rate of 15, spindle speed 16,000, um, all this stuff, you can just copy that. I'm gonna hit select. Oh, if that ever disappears, just hit it again. I'm gonna move my face so you can see this a little better going to do it one pass and now we want that to machine right on top of the line so as long as we have that machine vector being on the line we could choose any diameter of cutter head that we want because this is going to reference to the center of the cutter head I don't need to separate passes I don't need to add tabs I don't need a ramp actually let's do a ramp let's do a one inch ramp smooth one inch ramp and we're going to call this juice ring now I'm gonna calculate it. Okay, then what I can do is come up here and say preview all tool paths. I'm gonna slow the preview down. Preview selected tool path and we can see it's gonna come in with the ball nose bit and cut that. If I wanna see the whole thing, I can take that down. That's great. All right, so now I'm in the 3D view. I wanna go back to the 2D view. That's where I was doing my design work. And if you wanna cut a handle or something like that in here, um, that's when you're gonna grab the ellipse, you can create it, and then you can change it after the fact. So if you grab this edit objects transform mode, let's just ignore this for now. You can ignore the juice ring. I probably, if you're gonna do the juice ring in this and the handle cutout, probably gonna wanna make the handle cutout a little smaller. You can see these little handles on it. This is referencing the center of the board. So you'll wanna have this be centered let's say I like it just like that. Uh, then you're gonna come back to tool path and you're actually going, I'm gonna move me down again, put me back over here. You're going to do this profile tool path again. That means that the, the router bit is gonna follow the circle that you have, but now your cut depth is gonna be different. You gotta be careful on your cut depth here. 
I know we want that hole to go all the way through, but oftentimes that little piece, right when it's cut through, gets caught on the router bit and it'll get thrown or it'll screw up a cut. Uh, and so what we do is we, we leave an onion skin, just a super thin layer of wood underneath of that cutout. And then we'll run your piece upside down through the time saver until that piece falls out. That way it comes out in a controlled manner. So if my cutting board was three quarters of an inch deep, that's 0.75, I would go like 0.73. So measure your thickness of your cutting board and give yourself maybe five thousandths, I'll go 0.7, uh, five thousandths of an inch or so of wood that doesn't pack, come out. Now this is really important. The tool that we wanna pick is gonna be the quarter inch end mill. And if you don't have that, which I'm kinda of surprised that I don't, I'm just gonna hit the create button I'm going to edit the tool's name. I'm going to call it, it doesn't really matter, one fourth inch end mill. I'm just going to erase the rest of all this stuff. Say OK. It's an end mill. It's going to have two flutes, and we're going to create the settings. Make sure the diameter is a quarter of an inch. Pass depth will say you want your pass depth to be about the same width as the router bit itself, so it can go down a quarter inch at a time. Step over a 0.1 is okay. Spindle speed of 18,000 is okay. Feed rate, we're gonna slow it down to about 100. Plunge rate of 20 is great. That's tool number one. We're gonna hit apply. And we're gonna move this one up here <laughs> and say select. Then, Uh, we've got, uh, it's going to do it in three passes. That's okay. We want to go on the inside of our line. So that router bit's going to travel around the inside of that oval that I created. Uh, that way it does not go past this. So it's going to cut right around the inside. Don't worry about separating the pass. Don't add tabs. For sure, add a ramp of one inch, and we're going to call this one handle and calculate. So now if I wanted to preview both, Reset preview, preview selected tool paths, and we can see it's going to go three times through there. It's just not a powerful, or the router bit is too skinny to do that all in one pass. We'll break the router bit, and I can't see all the way through it because it's leaving just that tiny little bit of wood there. So what I'd like you to do now is come up here, say file, save as. Uh, save it as cutting board. Actually, put your initials in there first. So I put KLS C cutting board. And save in your network drive. My network drive is not popping up here, so I'm just going to put it on the desktop. But I would save yours on your network drive. Save. And then you're going to come over here to Canvas. And in our Woods class, there is this CNC file drop. Now it looks different for me because I have the teacher view, um, but you're gonna upload that file to here and then we're gonna double check it before we cut it out. If you have any questions, please see.